Off the Colombian coastline lies the San Bernardo Archipelago. Santa Cruz del Islote is the smallest of these islands. This tiny coral island was born of a legend. About 150 years ago, a group of fishermen came across it, and since it was too late to return home, they spent the night there. The story goes that the men slept so well that night that they decided to stay. The surface area of the island is just 10,000 square meters. It is tiny, and yet it has 1,240 inhabitants. Here, the population density is four times greater than in Manhattan. Sergio Cardales was born here. He comes from a family of fishermen. After completing his studies on the mainland, he came back to live on the island and to start a family here. This is the school. That's a normal school uniform. They have another uniform for sport. They're primary school children. They're playing. It's break time. This is the first year that we'll have qualified youngsters here who will sit their exams in this school. The island belongs to the Department of Bolivar. They help us with some things, but not everything, unfortunately. When it comes to education, we don't get much support. The youngsters who leave to study in other towns in the department must go to private schools and pay for their studies. We've got to be self-sufficient. On the island, they must put up with precarious living conditions. The electricity is only switched on for five hours a day. It is powered by a generator. There is no running water and no sewerage system. We collect rainwater in channels on the rooftops like these. Then we use the water we collect uh, to fill these tanks. We add chemicals to purify it and ward off mosquitoes and dengue fever. Then we keep the water in covered tanks all summer. If the water runs out, the army will supply us with more. They can top up our water supply several times a year if we need it. The tourists are arriving. It's time for the first boats from Rincon de Mar to dock. Rincon de Mar is the nearest village on the mainland. The boats from Tolu arrive at about 11 o'clock. Guides give tourists a tour of the island. It's a good source of revenue for us. They pay 5,000 pesos per person. It goes towards maintaining the community arts centre and keeping the streets clean. We have a good life on the island. It's a hard one. We have to keep fishing to earn a living for ourselves and for our families. We usually catch something, but not always. We have to save money for the bad days. It's paradise, but life's very expensive here. Other than that, it's great. Sergio learned to fish when he was a boy. It is the main means of subsistence on the island. I dive the traditional way, without any breathing apparatus. I don't use an oxygen tank, just my lungs. I just wear a mask and flippers. I spent a lot of time diving with my cousins when we were kids. From the age of three, we lived in the water. We wore masks from a very young age. Fishing is the biggest source of income for the island. Fishing provides food for the tourists as well. 
But fishing provides everything. It keeps the shops open. The fish we catch every day go into the island's economy. This is a crab from the royal family of crabs. Unfortunately, I can't keep it. It's still too small. I can't eat it now. Someone else will catch it in a while. I love fishing. I love the contact with the sea. I feel happy. I can communicate with it. I like the contact with the fish and the, the shellfish. That's what I like the best. We have no boss. And we're our own bosses. We fish for as long as we like. We have no fixed hours for starting or finishing work. I like playing football. I play with my cousins. We all get on very well. We live in harmony in this island. It's so beautiful. Here, I have everyone who matters to me, my family, my cousins and my friends. Living on this island is one of the best experiences of my life. I feel very proud to have been born here. Thanks to the sea in this island, I was able to pass my exams and go to university. It was all paid for with the money I made from fishing and what my parents passed on to me. One day, I'll tell my daughter about my life on Islota so that she understands who her father was on this island and the effort I put in to pay for her studies. If she decides to leave the island one day, I'll tell her to never forget where she was born. Even if she succeeds in life, she must never forget her roots or the people who watched her grow up. She must never deny her roots. She must never forget who she is, where she comes from, where she was born, and where she grew up.